All right, so last class we, uh, we got some new equations. Th this is for the principal stresses, the maximum normal stresses that we're ever going to have and the minimum normal stresses at any orientation that we're going to have. The orientation that, that sees these maximum and minimum normal stresses is the principal orientation, the principal plane. It's theta p. Um, and the values are from this equation right here. Um, and so then we can find the normal stresses. The tau, the shear stress at this location is zero. Uh, so let us draw just a, a real quick example. Uh, if we had some element that had a sigma x of 70 MPA, a sigma y, do you see this is negative 15 MPA, and a tau, if this is 20, that would be negative 20. I like to write out here uh, just to emphasize. Okay, my sigma x is 70, my sigma y negative 15, my tau is negative 20. Why is it negative? But because it's not pointed to that top right corner, it is pointed towards these corners. So it's a negative shear stress. All right, so let us, let's write this problem statement. Calculate the principal stresses, the principal orientation, and draw on an element. Okay, uh, which one do you want to start with? Let's, we can do the principal stresses, sigma 1 and sigma 2. Uh, we have an equation that we derived. It's on our uh, formula sheet here. I, I pulled up our formula sheet this time. I think you have that, this somewhere. It was the formula sheet for test 1 and test 2. No, sorry, for test 2, and it will be for in sheet 4, test 3. <clears throat> here are our stress transformation equations, all of this right here. And the principal stresses, can you read the Sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2 plus and minus the square root of sigma x minus sigma y divided by 2 quantity squared plus tau xy squared. So let's go back to our notes, and let's uh, fill this out. All right, so sigma x is 70 plus sigma y, negative 15, divided by 2, plus and minus the square root of sigma x minus sigma y. Be careful with minus and negatives right there. Uh, quantity squared plus negative 20, here, blah, 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 plus <clears throat> the magnitude squared of tau xy. So, and let me give you some numbers, because this will be helpful for us. This is 27.5 plus and minus 46.9. So, sigma 1 would be 27 plus 46.9. 74.4 MPA. Sigma 2, generally, sigma 1 is the larger one. Sigma 2 is the smaller one. Would be the 27.5 minus 46.9. Negative 19.4. MPA. Those are the principal stresses. That's the maximum stress at any orientation. No matter what orientation I'm at, I'm never going to get above 74.4. And no matter what orientation I'm at, I'm never going to get below a negative 19.4. You can see at our original orientation, let's make sure that these are in between those values. All right. 70, yeah, that's not above. And, and the negative 15, that's not uh, below. All right. So those are the principal stresses. Now, the principal uh, orientation, theta p. We've got an equation for that. Tangent of 2 theta p would be tau xy, negative 20, divided by sigma x minus sigma y, divided by 2. Right there. Two minuses make the plus. Uh, this would give me a uh, 2 theta p, right? If I do inverse tangent, I'm going to get 2 theta p of negative uh, 25.2. So my theta p, 12.6, uh, negative 12.6. So those are my <clears throat> principal stresses. That's my principal orientation right there. Now, <clears throat> I want to draw these. So originally I started right here. I need to rotate my element what is this negative? Negative means clockwise. I need to rotate it clockwise 
12.6. So that means my X was coming right out of this face. Now my X is coming right out of this face. Uh, and that is 12.6 degrees uh, away. 12.6 degrees of rotation. All right. Now I need to put positive 74.4 on one of these faces, but, but I'm not sure if I need to put the 74 point four maybe this is it seventy four point four right here and maybe nineteen point four right there uh, but it might be the other way all right if I want you to sketch it then I want you to make sure these are on the correct faces all right and so what do I need to do I need to plug negative twelve point six into my original stress, my, uh, let's call it my sigma x prime stress transformation equation. All right, plug in a theta of negative 12.6 and also plug in our, my, our original sigma x, sigma y, tau xy. Let's go to that um, formula sheet. So uh, I'm not going to look at principal stress equations right there. I'm going to look at back at this equation right here. Plug in negative 12.6, negative 12.6. Plug in negative 20, plug in 70. So, you know, my original, not my new. All right, plug those in, and I would get a sigma x. would get sigma my new sigma x is 74.4 okay so that's a good sign that i got one of these two stresses and so that means that this one belongs on the x face this x face was rotated 12.6 degrees clockwise so it is now right here so here we go i've got I've got 74.4 MPA in tension. I've got 19.4 MPA in compression on that face. And do not draw any shear. Don't, don't try to draw any shear. The shear stress at the principal orientation is zero. The shear stress at the principal orientation is zero. So there we go. You know, that's how you can find the principal stresses, principal orientation. If I don't ask you to sketch it, you can just leave it, leave it right here. Say sigma 1 is 74.4, sigma 2 is negative 19.4, and theta p is negative 12.6 degrees. But if I ask you to sketch it, you need to know which of these goes on which face. <clears throat> so plug in your theta p to the original stress transformation equations, and you should get one or the other, and that one will tell you the one that goes on the X face, and the X face is the one that is that, that this X axis is coming out of, is perpendicular to. Okay? Alright.